In a perfect world, your real estate business would be like a sports car. A well-oiled machine that starts right up, runs smoothly, goes faster and faster, and takes you exactly where you want to go. But we don't live in a perfect world, and sometimes this happens. Your business doesn't start, or maybe it starts, but then you get stuck. You're not going where you want to go, or you're not getting there as fast as you want to get there. If that sounds familiar, you might need a new approach, one that puts strategy first and tactics second. Just ask Brett Jennings. He started his team 10 years ago, and get this, he saw no growth for the first three years. Fast forward to today, Brett's team and brokerage are experiencing tremendous growth. He's a Homelight Elite agent, one of the top 1% of agents on our platform. So what happened in those 10 years? How did he break through that ceiling? Brett's going to tell us today, and he'll share the one-page strategic plan that helped make it happen. I'll tell you where to download that in just a moment. This is The Walkthrough. Hi there, I'm Matt McGee, the managing editor of Homelight's Agent Resource Center, also your host right here on The Walkthrough. This is a weekly podcast. We have new episodes that come out every Monday morning. This is the show where you'll learn what's working right now from the best real estate agents and industry experts in the country. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're on a journey to find out how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. If you want to get involved in the show, you can find me. You can also find my guest today in our Facebook Mastermind group. Just go to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Walkthrough. The group will come right up. That's also where you're going to find the downloads that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. What would you do if your business stopped growing for three straight years? That's what happened to my guest today. The Brett Jennings Group did 50 plus deals and more than a million dollars in GCI in their first year together. Year two, same results. Year three, same results. Didn't matter what tactics they tried. And as Brett tells the story, they tried plenty, but no growth. That's when Brett realized it was time to put strategy before tactics to develop a business plan that would allow his team and eventually his entire brokerage, to grow year in and year out. Let me give you some background. Brett formed his team, the Brett Jennings Group, in 2011. The team is currently Brett, five other agents, and support staff. They're on pace to do more than 120 deals this year and earn more than $4 million in GCI. As I mentioned, Brett is a Homelite elite agent, the best of the best. Brett formed his brokerage, Real Estate Experts, in 2019. They currently have about 60 agents and another 10 to 20 support staff. The brokerage is on pace to do well over a billion dollars in volume this year. That's billion with a B, like the TV show. Even in Silicon Valley where they're based, that is a remarkable number. Now, since this is the time of year when you're starting to plan for 2022, I'm thrilled to have Brett with me for the next two weeks because the big change in Brett's business, it was a new approach to strategic planning. So on today's show, you're going to hear us talk about the six components of a business framework called EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. You'll hear how the EOS taught Brett to crystallize his vision into a one-page strategic plan, and we'll start sharing the eight questions that you have to ask yourself to create your own one-page strategic plan. This isn't just for teams, but if you have a team, let me suggest you gather everyone around and listen together before you sit down and make your business plan for next year. And yes, as I mentioned, there's a bonus. You can download one of Brett's old one-page strategic plans, and we also have a blank template to use yourself. You'll find those later today in our Facebook Mastermind group. So without further ado, let's get started. No one wants their business to get stuck like Brett's did when he formed his team. 
So let's hear how his business got unstuck with a one-page strategic plan. Brett, you start your team in 2011. You'd already been a real estate agent for a few years by then. In the first year, I think it was, for first or second year, you do 50 plus deals, you do a million GCI, which is awesome. But then you get this, then you get the same numbers the next year and the same numbers the next year. What's going through your head at this point? Yeah, that's that's a great question. And and the first thing that comes to mind is right, frustration. Um, you, you set this milestone for a big goal, and uh, you know, as as real estate agents, once you've made a good income and a good life, then you start setting your heights on a higher vision that that was okay, the million dollars, you know, gross commission income. And uh, I, I remember just feeling like I hit a plateau. I was giving it all I had, but um, I just couldn't seem to find, you know, that next level. Um, I got stuck right there at that at that million dollar mark. It was frustrating. What were you doing on your own to sort of figure out why you had hit this plateau? I was doing what everyone else in my current environment was doing, right? Um, I was prospecting for new business. I was servicing that business, uh, you know, working with buyers, trying to work more with sellers than buyers. And yeah, for, for whatever reason, you know, just by taking in the input of those people in my immediate environment, uh, I had top agents around me, but, you know, I was just doing the same thing that they were doing, those other top agents, and I was getting the same results and I was stuck. Was there a key moment that sort of changed everything and got you on the path to breaking that plateau? Yeah, I I do remember specifically. um, It was, I went to a coaching event for Craig Proctor and it was about lead generation and business. And in fact, Gary Keller, who was the founder of Keller Williams, spoke at that event. And I remember he stood in front of the stage and I I have an audiographic memory, like someone can say something once and I'll I'll literally remember their words verbatim. And what he said, like, just struck me because it spoke to me and where I was at. He said, if you're giving it all you've got, right. And you you just not, you're just not getting to where you want to go. You're missing something. And it's, it could be a perspective. It could be, you know, a new environment. It could be, you know, a, a new something to go to that next level. And, um, often it's, it's a coach, you know, or a mentor that can get you there. And so that, that spoke to me. And so I, I ended up signing up for coaching at that event, the coaching really, the next coach I engaged with was the coach that, that really gave me the formula to break through that ceiling and any other ceiling so far that I've, I've encountered or a plateau that I've encountered in the business. And that really was this one concept of this one page strategic plan. There are a lot of agents who will succeed on the strength of their work ethic, on the strength of their personality. You're saying that you learned that at that point that it takes more to reach the next level. You need to have a plan in place. A hundred percent. And so, yeah, I mean, you, and we'll see that, see that in this industry, no matter what the geographic location and the price points are, it's usually somewhere between 40 and 70 units. A solo producer um, in a real estate business, even with an assistant, you know, very rarely gets past that somewhere between 40 and 60 transactions. They just will achieve burnout. Yeah, that's that's typically what happens. And so then they got to start to organize a team. And what my typical formula was at that point, I was going to workshops and seminars and things at that time. And I would go and I'd get inspired by hearing from these top agents, all of these ideas, these tactics that they would put forth. And I had a yellow legal pad and I'd write them all down and I'd end up with like 50 of them, you know, on my list that I'd try to organize in some fashion on my flight home, you know, just kind of recapping um, and try to go in and, and implement all of these things. And, um, and, and that was, that was kind of what got me to that plateau. And I was trying to do it all really. I was like, all these great ideas. If I just implement them all, my business will be amazing. But that wasn't what was happening. I was getting stuck. And so it wasn't until we really found um, the one page strategic plan and the model of EOS that um, really helped us get clear and then and break through. You just mentioned EOS. Why don't you tell me, tell listeners what EOS is and and what it has meant to your business? Yeah. EOS um, is, is short for Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's based uh, on a book uh, by Gina Wickman called Traction. And it's it's really about how to organize your thoughts around building a business. The challenge with most entrepreneurs is, um, you know, we all start out as what we'll call tacticians. We're delivering a service or a product. And then um, 
you know, we fall into being an entrepreneur because we're so good at what we do. We get lots of business and we need to start to build systems to deliver it, but that's usually not our strong suit. And so EOS is called the short for entrepreneurial operating system. It's not a technology or a software. It's a framework in which how to um, organize your resources in business uh, and then a framework about how to create a vision uh, and then, you know, day by day, actually work in what's called a 90 day world um, in implementing big projects every 90 days to really get you to where you want to go. What are the the pieces, the components of this EOS idea? Yeah, EOS, I mean, the, the concept um, is, you know, at the core of it is your business and it starts with vision. Um, and by asking, you know, some eight key questions to really crystallize what it is you do and why you do what you do. Um, and probably that was the, the game changing moment for me because I, I recognized I hit this plateau um, and I had an idea about, OK, well, I'm in real estate because at some point I want to make enough money to buy investment property and retire from real estate and go do what I really want to do, which was like life coaching, business coaching. Um, and it wasn't until we got really clear and grounding um, my purpose, which through these eight questions helped do it. It was really like, why do you do what you do? And and what brought like the brought that all into focus was um, an exercise called the eulogy exercise, where you actually write your own eulogy. Like if you're, you know, here it is, the end of your life, and <laughs> you know, the question is, you know, a church, synagogue, whatever, who's there? And, you know, you're floating around in this presence, presence in the back of the room. Who's there and what are they saying about you? Certainly it wasn't, you know, uh, I, he was so amazing because he sold so many houses. And um, that that was a powerful uh, exercise. I really put, you know, t- 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 took it to heart and put my, my, my heart into it. And um, what I recognized that what these people were saying was that, you know, I wanted to live, love, learn, grow, help other people do the same. And that was why I was interested in retiring, quote, and doing, you know, business and life coaching. And and my mentor just put it to me because the next question, once you know what your real purpose is to put this at the center of your business is, you know, if that's who you really are, this person who wants to do this, if what does your business look like if you brought all of who you are to everything you do? And the simple answer for me was, well, I'd probably be coaching my agents more. Um, and, uh, I just didn't have people that wanted to be coached at the time. So, um, getting the core purpose down was it, what was interesting for me at that point was literally I did that exercise on a weekend when I was out of town. Um, and on that Sunday, I got the first phone call from one of the agents who I didn't have the best agents on the team at the time called to, no, I think I'm going to leave the team. And I was like, got oh. the pit in my stomach. Oh, wow. Um, and then I got in the office on, tu- on, on Tuesday morning because it was a long weekend after coming back. And another agent walked into the office and said, hey, I need to talk to you. Uh, I think I want to leave the team. And I was like, wow. And, and it, was a, it was an aha moment. But I recognize in hindsight, you know, um, what God, universe, whatever you want to call it, um, had kind of taken my sandcastle and just knocked it down for me so I, I could recreate it. But that all happened spontaneously from just getting super clear clear on the purpose. Um, and, and that, and, and from there I created a vision for the business. I wanted to create a business that was, you know, um, a real estate company, but really what, what it enabled me to do was fulfill this purpose of coaching people, developing people. Uh, and when that happened, all the other components of EOS really start to kick in the gear. Okay. So you just mentioned these eight questions and I really want to dive in with you soon on that, Brett, but first, the EOS has more that you, you mentioned vision is one of these components of the EOS. What else is involved? And, that, and that's the starting component. What, what, what else is involved in EOS is data. So it's getting a pulse on your business, like basically knowing your numbers. So many of us in real estate, like we just <laughs> fly by the seat of our pants, you know, sell as many houses as we can, put the money in the bank and hope that there's more there, you know, than, 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 comes, um, than bills come at the end of the month. But by what we don't measure, what, what we measure, we can manage, and typically what we measure will grow. So it's really um, getting mindful and figuring out what are the things that I want to manage in my business. As a real estate agent, when you're starting to grow a team, it's three things: it's appointments set, it's appointments met, and um, it is the leading indicators is appointments set, met, and signed. So a buyer that committed to you or a listing taken, and so we create those scorecards. That's data. That's the second piece. 
Process is the third, and that's really starting to build systems. Um, and as you grow your real estate business, if you have an administrative assistant and you're going to continue to grow, you got to have her start to build systems and, and the process and how she does things or puts it together so that you know you can deliver the same awesome experience whether you're doing 20 transactions or you're doing 90 transactions. And then, then beyond that, it's really people uh, because when we're growing a real estate business, it's, it's about really people. And then the last piece is issues. As you go to, to build this business, you've got people, you've got process, you're measuring what you do. Um, issues are going to pop up. Things break, you know, customers get right. upset. Yep. You, the, the, the signpost forgot to go, you know, got to get ordered. And these point out holes in your process. So it's really about having um, all of these things together that on the weekly basis, you have a meaningful meeting to revisit your plan and then look at like, okay, what are the issues that, what are we running into um, while we're, you know, trying to create this, this great business and um, how do we solve for them? And so that becomes just a a weekly conversation in in the business. And and this is a, a kind of a simple framework for really putting that all together. Homelight gives top real estate agents a platform to showcase their skills and experience. And you can claim and set up your profile in less than 15 minutes. And unlike most referral platforms, we don't charge any upfront fees. We only ask for a 25% broker to broker fee once you close the deal. Our agent matching algorithm connects experienced agents with qualified referrals who are serious about buying or selling. Claim your profile today by visiting homelight.com slash agents. So you get introduced to this EOS idea, Brett. What is the impact that it has on your business? Was it just creating a focus and giving you that framework that you needed to go to the next level? Yes, absolutely. Beyond just creating a framework and a way to organize my thoughts and ideas around the business, the the questions that are asked in in getting clear on the vision of what I wanted to create, it's really the power of the vision. The vision um, is, is where it all starts and ends. And that's what uh, I, you know, I feel like kind of was the the missing component for me because I was doing a lot of activity, taking a lot of action prior to this, but I really wasn't clear on the vision. The framework of EOS forced me to get clear on the vision. And as soon as I got clear, like I said, and I kind of defined what my personal purpose was as it related to the business, what our business purpose was, all of a sudden magic started to happen. You know, I told you that uh, I defined that purpose for myself as, you know, live, love, learn, grow, help other people do the same. And I had the agents on my team who were with me at the time left organically and spontaneously, literally like a week later, I got a phone call from an agent. He said, look, I've known you for seven years. I've watched your trajectory. You keep succeeding more and more every year. I'm a single dad. I just coming off a divorce. I want to, I want to be a better agent. I want to build a better life. I think you can help me get, get there. Like, you know, will you coach me? And literally that, that happened about another 30 days later, another person just kind of showed up in my world. But that just, I think goes to, as a, as a testament to the power of purpose, when you, as the core of your business are clear on what, what you're doing and why you're doing it, you know, all of these unseen forces seem to kind of orchestrate things and put them in your path. And that's really when things totally opened up for us. Like we went from 50 million that year, you know, with, within 24 months, we were at 150 million. Um, and, and really like surpassed all of our wildest expectations and continues to do so now. All right, let me jump in here. This is a good spot to recap where we've been and set the stage for where we're going. Brett has been talking about EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's not software, sounds like it is, but it's a framework for growing your business. There's a website all about it, and I will link to that in today's show notes so that you can learn more. EOS has six key components. You heard Brett talk about vision, data, people, processes, and issues. I know, I know, that's five. I messed up. I kind of guided the conversation in a different direction before Brett got to talk about number six, which is traction. In a nutshell, traction is about installing focus and accountability across your team so that you can execute on your plans. Now, remember that plateau Brett mentioned at the start of the conversation, three years of no growth? When he applied EOS in his real estate business, that plateau disappeared. You just heard him say that their sales volume tripled within the first two years. 
as I said earlier today, as a team of Brett plus five agents, they're doing more than 120 deals and $4 million in GCI per year. Brett also mentioned a couple times that EOS asks you to ask yourself eight key questions to help crystallize your strategic plan. And I have a feeling you were thinking to yourself, Matt, shut up and let Brett talk about the eight questions. Hey, I hear you. That's going to be the focus of the rest of this episode. But listen, we're not going to have time to really give all eight questions the attention they deserve in just the next few minutes. So we'll get started now, and then we'll finish up the eight questions in part two next week. Sound good? Let's get back to the conversation with Brett introducing the eight questions that will help you create your own one-page strategic plan. The eight questions that really crystallize the vision in EOS are, first, like what, what is your core purpose and core values? And for, for me personally, like the, the most powerful part of that, it was doing this eulogy exercise, right? Like going to the end, you start with the end of mind, go to the end of your life, and what are people saying about you? And then you can back into really um, what are your core values? Um, and that's what, what I found was, um, from there we asked, what's our core focus. And, um, for us, we came up with our purpose was a better life through real estate for our clients, our partners, um, and the agents we work with. And then a vision, uh, what's the vision for the business. And for us, it was to be, you know, the brokerage of choice for the consumers and agents in the markets we serve. And that we, we partner with talented agents, leverage them with proven marketing personalized coaching and administrative support so they can increase their profitability and quality of life. Um, so one core thing in that core focus, it has to be bigger than you and it has to not be about you. Um, that that's one kind of key thing about it. Brett, when I hear core focus, core values, it sounds like a mission statement. Is it more than that though? Yeah. So the difference, so that, that's interesting. Cause like, you know, I had read business books before and you, you know, you see companies with their core, core values on them. And when we actually did this process, what we uncovered and we discovered, it really is a process of uncovering what your core values are. You can't, these aren't things you can copy and paste. Uh, really what, what, it, there's two types of core values. There's core values that, that what they call embodied means what you already are. And then there's core values that are aspirational. Really what, when you go to, to, to facilitate this process for yourself and your own business and, and, and what you want to do, um, you'll get together with the people in your team and you'll ask the question like, Hey, if, if we look at the best attributes of all of our players on this team, like what's awesome about so-and-so, you know? And maybe it's Michelle. Michelle's hardworking. She's diligent. Like she owns it. And and we go through each team member and write down what are the, the most compelling positive attributes about them. And we start to distill these down and look. look and actually, there's even technology. You can use something called a word cloud where you enter in and the frequency of the words used increase the size of the word. But, but what's cool is um, you go through and you take these positive attributes and you find the most common positive attributes of your team members. And you look at those um, and those are what are your embodied core values. And we, then we ask the question, if there's anybody who's come into your world and left, either they left by their own choice or you, you let them go. What was it that they didn't have that wasn't, you know, that, that caused that relationship to not be right? Because ultimately, when you go to create a company and you find out what these core values are, there are things that you hire for and fire over. Um, and so these people come into and will leave your world because of them. That's why they're core. Brett, what would be a good example of a core value, right? Because like, you know, everyone says great customer service <laughs> yeah, is a yeah. core value. Yeah. Is that is that good or, or does it need to be more than that? It, it 100% has to be more than that. And here's what I mean. Um, oftentimes, like what we see espoused as company core values that you might've seen when you walked into Costco or somewhere, <laughs> things like integrity or customer right. service. These are things that I would refer to, we call platitudes, right? And platitudes are, if you could, you can end the sentence and say, well, I'd hope so. Like for example, integrity shouldn't be a core value. It's, it's table stakes. It's, I would, I would hope so that you got integrity because I wouldn't even want to consider doing business with you otherwise. Um, and the core values aren't necessary. They're not, not for customers really. I mean, they, they become part of the value that you deliver to your customers, 
but the core values as as in this context for the purpose of EOS, it's really core to who you are. And as I talked about, as I talked about, these are embodied values. These are these are the things that you and your team are being. These are the awesome things. These are the like the X factor. It's unpacking the X factor of what already makes you successful. And we find that out by taking your team, getting them together, and 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 doing an inventory of like what's awesome about so and so. But what's awesome about Mary? Like, well, Mary's hardworking. She's diligent. She owns it. Um, she's exceptionally caring about people. And so you do this kind of as what I call a 360 and do a round robin with your team members. And you'll see the things that pop up where multiple, there's redundancy, where these things start to show up again and again. And then that blue, ah, those are some of your core values. And then by the flip side, the other thing of core values are, are things that you won't stand for or you won't tolerate. And so if you've had you know agents, team, staff that have come into your world and you've let them go, um, what was it about that person that um, you know wasn't that, that they didn't have? And that's what you that's when you really get to what is core. And when when you get clear on that, it's powerful. It's powerful. Um, and 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 then you what you want to do is just make that present for for your people so that you continue to live into it, but also new people coming into the organization see it, feel it, and live into it as well. There you go. Such a great start to our two-part series with Brett Jennings. And we still have the rest of those eight questions to cover in part two next week. Remember, we'll have two downloads for you later today in our Facebook mastermind group. So be sure to look for those. One of them is a blank template that you can use to create your own one-page strategic plan. And then the other is an actual one-page plan that Brett used with his team a few years ago. You can use that kind of as a guide or an, an example. All right, let's do our takeaways segment. Here is what stood out to me from part one with Brett Jennings. Takeaway number one, Brett was stuck. His team had a really good first year, but then they hit a ceiling. No growth at all for the next two years. Why? Well, Brett says he had a lot of tactics he was trying, but he didn't have a vision and a strategy to grow his business. Takeaway number two, Brett is using EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System, to create a framework for growth. With EOS, there are six key components of a successful business. Real quick, let's go through those. Number one, vision. Where are you going long term? Number two, data. These are the scorecards for your business. Brett mentioned things like appointments set, appointments met, clients signed. The idea is to take emotion and feelings out and build your business around objective numbers. Number three, processes. These are the systems that you use to run your business. Number four, people. Great vision demands a great team. Number five, we didn't quite mention this, I messed up, traction, the discipline and accountability that allows you to implement your vision. And then number six in EOS is issues. What are the holes in your business and how do you solve for them? All right, that's takeaway number two. Takeaway number three, EOS asks eight questions to help you crystallize what you do and why you do it. We covered the first two today. What are your core values and what's your core focus? You heard Brett say that the answer to those questions, it can't be a platitude like we provide great customer service. Things like that should be a given. All right, next week in part two, we will continue going through those eight questions. And Brett, will walk you through how to create your own one-page strategic plan. So let's listen to a preview of that. The front side uh, of your plan with EOS, your one-page plan, the front side is really your vision, the 10-year the and the three-year picture. It's pretty far out in the future. The back side becomes your one-year and then what we call your 90-day world. So the 90-day world is really where the magic in this plan happens because People set goals oftentimes, you know, they'll set goals for the year. The problem is they never revisit their goals. They sit in a journal in a drawer or on a file on their computer and they're, they're not revisiting them on a regular basis. So that's a sneak peek at part two next week with Brett Jennings. Also a bit of a teaser there about the download that you can grab in our Facebook mastermind group. To get those downloads or if you have questions for me, or questions for Brett, you can find us in our Facebook Mastermind group. Just go to Facebook, do a search for Homelight Walkthrough, and the group will come right up. You can also reach me by voicemail or text. The number to use is 
322-3328, or just send an email. The address to use is walkthrough at homelight.com. That's all for this week. Thanks so much to Brett Jennings for joining me, and thank you for listening. My name's Matt McGee, and you've been listening to The Walkthrough. At Homelight, we believe in real estate agents. We're on a journey to find out how great agents grow their business, stand out from the crowd, and become irreplaceable. Go out and safely sell some homes. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye-bye.